Hey guys, Jimmy Vegas here, and this video is all about a little development log for a game that I've been teasing a little bit on my channel recently. Uh, it's an endless runner that you've probably seen a couple of videos of, and it's actually called, weirdly enough, Timmy and Mousy. It's a project I've been working on for a couple of weeks now, and I thought I'd actually bring this development log just to basically show you what's going on, what it is, how it's working, and where it's going to go from here. So those of you who've been following me for, you know, some time will probably know the last kind of project I did was something called The Demons Inside, which was a little, um, it's kind of like a survival horror kind of thing, just so you could quickly see uh, what you could make in Unity in a short amount of time. Uh, it's on Itch.io if you actually want to play, but we're not here to talk about Demons Inside, we're here to talk about Timmy and Mousy. So, currently as it stands, all that we really have is one level which endlessly generates itself so you can run um, through the whole thing and a couple of different scenes so initially all we have here is the start menu and there's not a lot to it all it really was is just a case of bringing in some assets from a couple of different places uh, the two characters are actually from Mixamo so that's the reason why it's called Timmy and Mousy. These two characters, this one here is named Timmy, this one's called Mousy. So those are the main two characters you would play as in this. And their names on Mixmo are actually Timmy and Mousy. So yeah, that's all there is to this right now. It's just a case of this menu. All these don't currently work because they're not coded yet. It's just the play, which takes you to the level select. And I'll get onto this level select stage uh, in just a moment. But obviously this doesn't work yet either. It's just this spinning around and then we would play stage and get to the game itself. Um, this as well, just a little control scene, just kind of show you what the controls are. They are simple. Move left and right and jump. So as we come into the scene, uh, obviously it is going to be a different scene um, as opposed to the control scene, as opposed to the uh, main menu. And you can see that there is another character in this right now. This one was in the uh, last video that went up um, about, I'm not quite sure, it might have been about a week ago, I think. Um, so yeah, there are going to be different characters as well. So this scene itself is taken from the assets, well, not literally taken from the asset store. The assets from this are from the asset store from a low poly asset because I wanted to go low poly in this because the whole idea of it is to be able to play it on PC or on a tablet uh, you know, iPad, iPhone, whatever. Uh, well, not necessarily an iPhone, but you get the idea. A mobile gaming game. <laughs> Is that a thing? A mobile gaming game? I don't know. Anyway, so it, this one has nothing to it. The only real part of this is the menu control scripts, which have everything in there, all the UI that appears. So moving on to another scene, uh, let's go to the... Let's go to the stage select screen. So this one's a little bit different. All the lighting and everything has come out of this one. And we only have the standard directional light. Uh, there is no skybox. The color is just gone completely. So we get that whole black image. And we end up just seeing the spinning level there. So we can see all it is is that. Now obviously there's another one over there because I am designing more levels. That's a placeholder at the moment. So you can see that's just basically what this scene is. So it's an actual object spinning around like so. So it gives that illusion of there's nothing else, just that. Now I wanted to kind of go for the whole Crash Bandicoot style-ish with this. Uh, just because I like trying different things over different projects. And I felt that this probably fitted the whole Crash Bandicoot little thing a bit more. So that's all it really is, the stage select. Obviously when there is more... Uh, stages to run the arrows would work and you'll be able to move over to the next one next one next one and select them um, let's go to the controls scene now so obviously these are all going to change over time these are just kind of placeholders at the moment but all this control scene is is just basically the main menu but with the lights dimmed just kind of give that um, faded backdrop look so you can see that design just kind of faded so the prominence of this is in the controls the UI itself obviously uh, it's not always going to be that whole desert scene because I plan to make uh, an ice uh, stage forest um, town or a city or something and um, so many more obviously going to be more characters to go with as well now one of the key features to this is the fact it randomly generates sections as you run along. 
So if I go to the desert run scene, and this one is pretty much almost done. There is not much more I have to do to this. But the whole idea of this and how it works is somewhat, I wouldn't say ingenious, but it's a little bit nifty how it works. So what happens is as the character runs along, there are certain points where he or she will cross over. So here you can see that we have a trigger at the end of this starting section. So this starting section, starting block, will always be the same. This is static, that will never ever change. But as we uh, load the level up, it generates two random sections ahead of it. And every time we cross this block, it will generate another one after those sections. And after some time, it then unloads other sections. So, for example, if we start this level up and we then generate two sections ahead, which I will actually press play and pause so we can see what happens in that scene view. So let's pause now. And you can see that two sections have indeed, or rather one section has been generated. And then the second section will be generated when you cross this section here. So if we carry on and then cross that section and pause. Well, it's not quite gone through. There we go. So it will generate just as it gets past. So it's on a bit of a timer. You could think of it as a bit of a delay to kind of enable the game but you can see already that it has cloned down here so now we have this section here you may be wondering what this big sandy looking thing is there is no real need to it i don't think i just wanted to kind of block out anything that you could see too far into the distance and yes i know there's different ways of doing it but i wanted to have the idea of this being a sandstorm as well at some point so i thought i could kill two birds with one stone i could use that as a way of not seeing too far and also bring it a little bit closer to give a sandstorm effect whether i'll do that in the future i'm not entirely sure i just wanted to get the basics down at the moment but as we can see right now, we have two sections randomly generated in front of us. And it has indeed generated the same section twice. We can tell with this right there. So that's something I also have to code into this so we don't get the same section one after the other. So that's a little bit more coding that I will have to do within this desert generation script. And I'm actually going to go into that desert generation script if it decides to load up. So basically, the way this works is it generates one of however many sections. In this case, I have 10 sections at the, uh, sorry, yes, 10 sections at the moment. So we need to generate uh, a number and assign it to that. So going back here, we can see that we have those 10 sections. Now, they are all named the same. And that's where the little nifty code comes in, because it can always unload the correct um, actual block rather than a random one. So if I reset this now and press play, now I'm going to go a little bit further. And if you watch here, you can see the clone appear. So the next section should appear now. And as we go along, collecting everything, we should see another clone appear down here. So each section is, I think it's about 200 in length. So we should see a new one appear now. And it has generated the same one uh, twice again. Again, that's down to the code. I need to just generate uh, some extra code to stop that happening. So I'm going to pause that now. And we can see that the start section is still there. And everything is looking as it should do. So we have all the sections generated. So as we carry on a little bit further, we'll end up seeing that the start block remains there, which is perfectly fine, because there's not a lot to that. But then other blocks start disappearing. And we can see right now that we have a new random section generated here, a new block. So let me pause this now. And you can see that the first block that we went into has now unloaded out the game. The reason it does this is because we need to save resources. If we were to run for, you know, for many, many meters and keep all of those blocks there, you would slowly drain away the resources because you have far too much in the scene. 
Now, I'm not going to go too much more into this because there are little bugs and glitches here and there, and I do plan to get people to play test this before it really goes anywhere. So people that are on um, a Patreon uh, or YouTube membership of this channel, they'll get to play test this and have their own ideas and input as well. But that's not a plug here. This is a development video to show you where we're at with this and what I intend to do next. So what do I intend to do next? Well, you may have noticed when we went into the scenes, there was an ice run scene. So there isn't much to this at the moment. Um, what I do need to do is finish up this whole level, get rid of all the bugs and glitches, and then I can kind of use that premise to then work on a different stage. Uh, again, there isn't really much to this. It's just all the colors kind of been changed on this. It's still the whole desert look. But the good thing, what I like about this, is just with a little bit of tinkering, you can actually make it look a bit icy. Brilliant. So, I kind of like where this is going. I, I love developing this kind of thing. And there are many, many projects that I work on whilst doing the content for this YouTube channel. And a lot of it you, you guys never really get to see in this sense, because a lot of it is regurgitated into the tutorials themselves. But this itself, I, I'm not sure whether I will do a tutorial on how to do this. Uh, I'm not sure whether it'll just be a standalone game, but at the moment I'm really enjoying creating this. And I, I really suggest if you want to have a go, try mimicking what I'm doing. You'll, you'll be able to learn some really cool stuff. Just be prepared to write some weird random scripts sometimes, because a lot of the time you'll find you've written a script, it's a little bit crazy and you need to refine it. That's a lot of what coding is. Create, getting where you need to get to and then refining, or at least that's how I like to approach it anyway. So um, yeah, that was the first development video of Timmy and Mousy, Endless Runner. Uh, I'm not sure how many I'm going to do. I I'll probably just upload one every now and again when I've got a little bit of progress on it or something new or something cool. But yeah, um, obviously at the moment, a lot of player prefs are being saved as well, because if we go back to the main menu uh, and press play, we can see that when we get down here, you know, this is all from testing. So I've collected uh, 933 coins, six gems, and I've ran 3,460 meters. Yeah, I don't know what the dance is for. I just figured my son likes it. He thinks it's funny. So I kept it in. Why not? Yeah, uh, so that's the development video. First one. And guys, thank you very much for watching.